Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to part two of our Thanksgiving special, um, the turkey, our main course. So first thing we want to do, we're going to preheat our oven to 325 degrees. We're going to cook it at 325 the whole time. It's the easiest method uh, that I can think of, so we're going to go with that for today. Um, so let's go over what we're using. I have a 14 and a half pound turkey. Um, stuffed with stuffing, it's going to take uh, four hours. Uh, three and a half unstuffed, but four hours stuffed. Um, I have the stuffing we made from our previous video. I have three ribs of celery, uh, four carrots, and one large onion uh, quartered. Um, now this is going to be used for our gravy. So if you're not using gravy, uh, it's not necessary. Um, but it also can work if you don't have a uh, rack. I have a rack in the bottom. You can also use vegetables and put it under the bottom of your rack to keep your turkey from sitting in the bottom and uh, getting too soggy. So it has a double purpose, which is really nice. Um, I have one pound of butter. Um, take three tablespoons of the butter and place it to the side. This is going to be used for our gravy to make our roux. Um, if you're not making the gravy, then uh, you can use that. Um, so the first thing we should do, put this to the side. I'm going to take a fork. And my butter has been sitting out at room temperature. So I'm just going to soften it up so it's more spreadable. Okay, I mushed up the butter a little bit. Now here's one of the funner parts. So what I have to do is take the skin and go for the back side start. I'm going to get your fingers underneath it. We want to, can you see my thumb? So what we're going to do, we're going to take this butter. Be careful not to, to rip it. Just generally get your hand in there and start working it in. And then you'll see. And we're going to take some of the butter. Take half this butter. We're going to put it on the inside. And you can just start sliding it back in there. You can even mush it. Slide it more. Keep going. Now, some people like to flavor the butter, but I want to keep this simple. You just keep working it, pushing it down in there. Now this is going to help make it really tender and juicy without drying out. So you don't have to check on it as much. But we will, regardless. Try to get it deep, you know, all the, everywhere you can. If you have to, like, so I notice it's not separating. Get your hand, get your fingers in there, separate that skin, and then you can slide it in there. We're only going to go in from the one side, the back side. It's easiest to get to. I'm going to take a big other piece and just keep pushing it in there. And as it melts, it's going to go everywhere, but you want it to drip, you know, kind of where you want it to. Take half. So yes, definitely just want to be careful not to tear because then you can get a, a dry spot and everything can start oozing out from there. Now this is a frozen turkey, so you want it to defrost in the refrigerator for two days. And then you want to let it sit in room temperature uh, for two days. I mean two days. For one hour, bring it out an hour before you cook, cook it. And uh, let it warm up a little bit. Because your refrigerator is about 40 to 38 degrees, so it's got a chill. So pretty much we just want to get rid of that chill. All right, 
So at this point, I'm going to put the other half on top, but now I like to stuff it first because then we're going to trust the bird, and then after we trust the bird, we'll uh, put the other half of the butter on it. So I'm not going to show you the inside of the cavity. It just doesn't look very good. But take your hand, pack it a little bit, and push it in there. Don't jam it in tight. Because it won't cook evenly if you do. So what I like to do, I like to have my hand as an air space on top of it. So that hot air can get inside there and cook more evenly. Now if you have kids, you might like the kids might want to do this. It might gross them out. But I always like doing it as a kid. Alright, one more. One more ball in there. And a little bit more. All right. So that's looking good. If I didn't mention, you definitely want to pat the bird down with paper towel first. Get all that extra moisture off it because then the butter won't stick to it. It'll just run off if you don't. I'm going to wash my hands really quick here. So you're going to need some butcher's twine or some cotton string. You can buy pretty much any grocery store over by where they sell dishes and stuff. So you can get it like this. It comes usually with cheesecloth. I use a lot of cheesecloth, so it always comes in a pack. So you need about four or five foot piece of uh, cotton twine. I'm going to turn the bird towards you. So we take the neck here, the neck bone sticking out. We want to take this loop and we're going to put it over the top of it. That's going to be our hook. Now this is the easiest method that I can think of to not make it too complicated. Is if you never trust a bird before, uh, it might seem a little overwhelming. So I hooked it on the bird and I just pulled it right alongside the legs. You can see it alongside the leg there. Now I'm going to crisscross it and I'm going to tie a knot right here and back. I'm going to do a surgeon's knot. All you do is you loop it twice. Right there, nice and snug. I'm going to take tie a knot. I'm going to loop under the leg, underneath the other leg, I'm going to pull them tight, do another surgeon's knot, go underneath once, go underneath twice, snug it together, and then tie that. So then we can cut off that excess there. Now, what trussing does, it keeps the legs and the wings tight together to help the breast from drying out. So now we just take the wing and it has a little, uh, part of the wing has this little notch in it. Just pull it up to it and it helps just lock it in place. So we'll do the same the other side here. I'm going to lift up the string. We'll tuck the wing in there. And there's that little notch. And then pretty simple. So we got that. Now, you don't have to truss, but if you don't, the wings and legs tend to open up and everything kind of splits apart. We're going to take the rest of our butter. smooth smooth it all over or whatever you want to call it try to get it everywhere you can you now the all this butter is going to really help it keep moist 
and good. Now, if I didn't mention, um, the frozen bird already comes in brine. Most frozen birds, I'd say over 90% of them. So if you just look on the package, if it doesn't say just turkey, it's, uh, it already has brine on it or it was soaked in brine prior to freezing. So if you do soak it, the bird could be uh, salty. Mother that everywhere you can. And it will drip down in the crevices, so you don't have to worry too much. But everywhere you can touch, try to get it in there. all that butter Good. all right that's looking pretty good things covered I'm gonna drip down in there the butters on the inside all right one more time wash my hands Also, now this is a 14 and a half pound bird. Now, if you're unsure, just look on your package and what they recommend should be fairly close. And if you're stuffing the bird, whatever they recommend, it's probably going to take 20 to 30 minutes longer. And if you're a person that likes to baste the turkey a lot, um, we're not going to, we will baste this later. But if you like to baste a lot, every time you open it up and baste it, you may be losing, you know, five minutes or so. So you got to keep that in mind. Oh, I hate all this mess. All right, get this off the side. So I dropped the veggies in the roasting pan already. Take our turkey. Just set that in there. Try to get it, you know, just centered evenly. Okay, today we're going to be using the tent method with aluminum foil. It's a good method. Um, it's a safe method. Um, so basically we're going to be making a tent. Now what the tent does we make the tent like this, well, a little shallower, but you want an air space uh, in between it so it can cook, cook evenly, but it allows the skin to still get crispy, but without burning. So we still get this, uh, the moisture coming up and then dropping back down on the bird. So I'll pull off roughly a three foot piece of the aluminum foil. I don't think we'll need that much for this one, but and also this large heavy duty aluminum foil works better, I think. You know, if not using a smaller one, then you're going to have to, uh, you know, double it up. You know, so I'm just going to crease it. Now, if you have too much, that's fine, because we can always pull the top over more. So I'm just going to start from one side. Just Just put it down in that, you know, like that. So, this is the part that's more crucial. You want to have that air space in between that. So we'll get over the bird. So I have a little too much there. That's fine. I'm just going to pull that there. Let me get that centered again. So this is part, if you have too much, you can crease that. You know, see, it's not, you know, too high above it. So if 
you look through it, there's only about you know that much space in between it. And you can look at the bird, you know, to see how the skin is doing. So this is pretty much a pretty safe method. Now, if you cover the whole bird, your skin doesn't get to, uh, it's not as crispy. Um, so this is a good in-between method for everyone to use. So at this point, my oven is nice and hot at 325 degrees. I'm going to set this in there and I'm not, I'm not going to look at it for two hours. And I'm going to go on the bottom rack. Now, you don't want to go on the very bottom. If you go on the bottom and try pulling out the bird, uh, <laughs> you could uh, start a little fire if it catches that lead. So it's uh, the rack about three inches off the bottom. I'm going to set that in there. I'm going to place it in the very middle. Shut that door. I'm going to set that timer for two hours. And then we'll check out it then. Okay, here's the turkey at two hours in. I want to give it a quick basting now and do it every 30 minutes till it's done and put it back in. All right, here's the turkey at three and a half hours in. Let's take a look. Okay, it's looking really good. But now I'm going to remove the, the lid, the aluminum foil. And now I'm going to baste it again. Now, a handy trick is if you have the extra butter, warm some up in a coffee cup or a mug. And then it's easier than trying to get the drippings out of the bottle. And also, if you're worried about your wingtips, if they start uh, burning at any point, just put a little piece of aluminum foil over it, and then you're good to go. All right, so now I'm going to put this back in for another half hour, and it should be perfect. Okay, here's our finished turkey. It looks wonderful. Four hours, exactly. Nice golden brown. The pop-up timer actually worked on this one. Sometimes it's hard to trust them, but it did work. Um, if you don't have a thermometer, um, what you want to do is poke in the thigh, and uh, like with a fork, and as long as the liquid is coming out clear, you should be safe. But if you do have a meat thermometer, Poke it into the breast in the meatiest part. And you want, you're looking for a temperature of 165 degrees. That is the ideal temperature and the safe temperature. So here's our Thanksgiving turkey. Thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate all of you. Happy Thanksgiving and have a blessed day. Bye.